So this final video is a bit of an extra in that it's not directly related to the test but it's going back to something we talked about a couple of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago I showed that these two formulas we had for the scalar and vector products in terms of components and in terms of the lengths and angles and this one I sh sh proved that these two formulas were the same, but in that proof I assumed something important. I assumed that these formulas here were independent of the choice of basis, and this allowed me to choose a basis which made the calculation easy. Okay. So now in this video I'm going to prove this fact. I'm going to prove the fact that this equation here and this equation here are independent of the choice of basis. And I'm going to do it by using the fact that a rotation is an orthonormal is an orthogonal matrix. Okay. Right. So let R be a rotation. Okay. So for the first one, we want to show that V dot W is the same as the rotated version of V dot the rotated version of W. Okay, that's what it means by invariance, right? And we want to show that this one is also the same. That means the rotated version of V cross W should be equal to the rotated version of V cross the rotated version of W. These are the two things we want to show. That's what it means by these things invariant under rotations of the basis. Okay, so these are not too difficult now that we know that R is an, orthonor, is an orthogonal matrix. First of all, suppose we've got a vector V, which is Vx, Vy, Vz. Okay, so then we define the transpose of a vector too, so Vt, and exactly the same, you just replace the column by a row. then you note that v dot w is equal to v transpose times w, right? Because this is vx, vy, vz times wx, wy, wz under matrix multiplication. That gives you that, right? So you can define the scalar product in this way, but you can also define it as v Okay, so no, you can define it in that way. So the question is then, what is R of V transposed? <clears throat> so this means you take the matrix R, apply it to V, and then transpose it. So that means the first vector is this times that, and so the first element here is this times that, then this times that, this times that. So this is the same as this Vx, Vy, Vc times this matrix transposed. Okay. So if we just check this is A, B, C, then here I get A, Vx, B, Vy, C, Vz. And here I get A, B, C. So I get A, V, X, B, V, Y, C, V, Z. It's the same, right? So this is equal to V transpose times R transpose. <coughs> okay? And you can prove this in general for, for general matrices. So in general, if you multiply two matrices or vectors together and transpose, this is the same as transposing and then multiplying together in the opposite way. So you just change the order. Now once you know that this is true, okay, I'll just it's very easy to finish the proof, so I'll just do it in this little bit of space here. So then you have the following R of V dot product R of W. 
So according to this, this is equal to R of V transpose times R of W. But according to this, this is equal to V transpose times R transpose times R times W. But the definition of orthogonal matrix is that this is equal to the identity matrix. Okay. So this is V transpose times the identity matrix times W. But the identity matrix doesn't do anything to W. So this is V transpose times W. But then this is the same as the scalar product V dot W. So that completes the proof of this first part of the result. Okay. The scalar product is unchanged by rotations. And the critical point is that rotations correspond to orthogonal matrices. Okay. Now the second one for the vector product is slightly more tricky, but not much more. Okay. So suppose I've got these two vectors, and I now consider... taking another vector u and taking the scalar product with v cross w. Okay. So we know from the previous video this is equal to the determinant of the matrix ux, uy, uc, vx, vy, vz, wx, wy, wz. Okay. And I can call this matrix A. Now, if I consider the rotation version of this, so R of U dot product R of V cross R of W, okay, then this is the determinant of the matrix. Okay. Where the, the first column is R of U. The second column is R of V. The third column is R of W. That's the determinant of that matrix. But this is equal to the determinant of R times the matrix A. Because right? if you multiply R by this matrix, you obviously get that matrix. But using the result that the determinant of a product of matrices is equal to the product of their determinants, you get that. But we know that the rotation has determinant equal to 1. Okay, That was also proved in the previous video. So the determinant of rotation is 1. So this is equal to the determinant of A, which is equal to u dot v cross w. Okay. So therefore you have the r of u dot r of v plus r of w must be equal to u dot v plus w. Okay. But now we can use the fact that the scalar product here is unvariant under rotations, which we've proved. So this must be equal to r of u dot product r of v cross w, okay, using the first part of the theorem. And you see that these two, you have the same thing here, and then you have different things here. And this must be true for all vectors u. Okay? So whatever vector u I choose here, you must be saying that the scalar product of this vector and this vector is the same as the scalar product of this vector and that vector. But the only way this can be true for all vectors here is if both of these vectors are equal. Right? So in other words, r of v cross r of w must be equal to r of v cross w. Okay, And that's the result we wanted to prove. So this shows how you can use um, the orthogonality of the matrix r, where r is a rotation, to prove that the coordinate formulas that's these formulas here, for the vector and scalar products are invariant under rotations of basis. And we've already seen that using that, 
you can prove that these two definitions of scalar product are the same and these two definitions of vector product are the same.